never have to be ready and you're always be prepared or you never have to prepare. You'll always be ready. You begin to understand I can navigate anything. I might not navigate it perfect or even well. Right. <laughs> I may suck at navigating, but I can do it. I can do it and I will do it and I will survive. Wow. And maybe eventually thrive. Wow. I love that. And the next one, we have two more questions. Um, oh, that is, they're so good. So I'm going to choose this one. They're all about boundaries, right? They, they, all, they all got it. So the next one is, uh, Shanti, thank you so much. You're talking mm -hmm. about boundaries, provided me with the necessary tools for me to take one step. I'm a mess still in putting boundaries. This 17-year-old uh, this, uh, girl, 17-year-old <laughs> is amazing. Yeah. I know uh, I'm a mess still putting boundaries, but now I'm beginning to understand them and feel them in my body. I just have a comment about this and maybe you can uh, like give, give her feedback because she's just exploring. I, more than these boundaries changing my external environment because my mom and my dad are still the same. My school is the same. Everything is the same. Something happened. Is my inner environment changing and that you have anything to tell me about that? Yes, your inner environment is changing. <laughs> and that's the truth. What she's actually speaking to is it true. Like just because you're able to do the work internally and you, the internal experience of yourself, which is the most important one, the relationship you have with yourself is the most important relationship in your life. And as that shifts and changes and you get more clear and you feel like, oh, that's the no and that's a yes, you get more full of you. And yes, your inner experience of yourself and also how you relate to like your mother, your father, right? Those things don't change. How you see them and relate to them and communicate with them do. And one of the pain, one of the hurts that I still sometimes carry is I have done so much work and there are certain relationships with people in my life that have not and will not change because it requires the other person. I can't do all the healing work in all of my relationships and the other person isn't doing theirs or isn't willing to right. come forward. Now I can understand the dynamic or understand that they're unwilling or whatever that is, but it's not my responsibility for them to change. I absolutely, it's not with them in any kind of my control or choosing for other right. people to change. And so I can only know that my inner life changes that I, I, I inside the myself, I can see, okay, that behavior from my parent is not my responsibility. It's not about me or that behavior at school from a teacher, that person's got fucking problems and they can keep it to themselves. I'm not going to internalize that about myself. That's mm. ginormous, right? Where you'd be able to see Huge. the line between like, that's not mine to carry. Even if my environment doesn't change, I'm not going to carry what people try to give me. And I might not be able to in that situation voice that. I don't know how safe the environment is, right? So I might not be able to voice that, but I can say it to myself. I may not be able to say it out loud because that may put me in danger. Emotionally, physically, financially, mentally, I don't know what the situation is. And that's okay that you don't then stand up for yourself. I don't believe in that anyway. I believe in being a stand internally. And if you can't in the current environment that you're in express that clarity it's okay you don't have to amen yeah make sure you hold it inside wow yeah and i want to pay tribute because i i just like my eyes were like 17 years old that's that's so, so that's so great that they are listening to the podcast and they are hearing your words so like she's doing because, the work she yeah. is she is taking herself through the initiatory guided process that the adults around her are not that's a big, wow. big deal. that's huge. Wow. Wow. Okay. One last question. And we have many more, but, um, you know, these, these, uh, we, we just grabbed those that were similar to each other. So everybody gets a response and those who don't, you know, just keep listening to the podcast and follow Shanti. The last one is Shanti. Thank you so much. I mean, again, boundaries. I, mean, I love how everybody like is so. I just I, I love everybody. Oh, they're they're so they're well. The, 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 there's there's some people that send us sometimes things that we just feel yeah. like goodbye. Yeah, but, of course, but, but I got the you, you're giving me the good ones. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much for modeling to me something that I aspire to become. Not you, but more of me. I love that. I love that. 
One of the things that have happened to me, not only by listening to you and this podcast, but by applying the information that serves me and that my, she said the word agency, which is rare to hear. And my agency tells me this feels right. I begin to feel so much, so much more safety that I didn't have when I was a child, uh, coming from a mom and a dad that both went to war and I was left with an uncle and an aunt that they didn't appreciate my stay with them while my mom and dad were in Vietnam. Mm. So, but uh, what my question is, somehow boundaries and me maturing in them, which is a theme that you speak of, have helped me begin to look, build inner peace. I see that you have in your website, your logo says built in peace. And that's exactly what I'm experiencing by me growing a little bit, hopefully um, more uh, mature and also setting boundaries. Why is it that boundaries give us peace? What, because some of the people that I'm putting boundaries, they're not at peace at all. So right. anything you got to say, that's a great so- question and it encompasses everything. So boundaries are a word that I like to use, but so when you're living in the world that teaches you only put any kind of authority into ex like the adults around you, the authority figures around you, and those relationships were not healthy. As a child, you internalize that and you really truly do create that environment internally. So you carry it with you into adulthood and it affects every way that you function. This is a fact in my life and I've seen it over and over again. It, it, and it is like, we've been talking about early childhood education for maybe a hundred years, but it is everything in your childhood matters and you can heal it and you can live a good life. I'm not saying that it like completely ruins you, but it is something that's so, and so when you're all, you take your whole nervous system and you're putting it into everybody around you and you're pleasing you and you start creating boundaries it's like calling your nervous system home wow all yourself into yourself all these tentacles of the nervous system that go out and like are feeling into the environment and feeling into other people's feelings because those were coping skills you had to have as a kid to survive in the environment you're in boundaries you call yourself home you bring your nervous system back to its own home root which is you and you start to create the internal safety, the actual, the only place safety can actually exist in the current world that we live in is within yourself. And that safety allows you, the internal safety allows it to get quiet enough that you can care for every part of who you are. And when you can care for every part of who you are, you're, I would, I built in peace with something I used a long time ago, but what the word I would use now is contentment. I don't need to be happy all the time. I don't need to be peaceful kumbaya all the time. Contentment is I can be angry. I can move it very quickly when I need to. I can sit and not have to do anything. I'm able to sit with my intense emotions without it being something that affects my well-being. And so that safety allows you to, if you move into therapy, if you do other personal development, it becomes something exponentially more to you because of the clarity you carry about yourself. Wow. And you also like, I stop looking out going like, what are other people doing? That's right, a whole right. shit ton of energy that comes back, right? You stop looking out and being like, I need somebody to validate how shitty I feel or even how excited I feel, right? right. Well, no, I just feel this way. That energy that was going out is all yours now. <laughs> Are very powerful. Yeah. I love, I love it. I think this is what we close it, calling your nervous system home. This, 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 this just, this, this is, I think, so powerful and so honest and so truthful. And I think that's what, I don't know if every one of us, but most of us want, right? We want to feel at home in ourselves. We want to feel that. that and here's the thing. If you don't feel at home in yourself, it's really hard to feel at home with others. Amen. Absolutely. And we seek home and others, home and others, home and others. Now, don't get me wrong. We need each other. Yes. But when we're leaky all over the place and we don't know who we are, we don't know our own edges. It's dangerous to link with each other. Yes. But when we know our own edges, we can link like a honeycomb. 
and actually operate in inter interdependence. And the deeper you go into to this boundary work and the deeper the maturity goes, the more you like start looking around and going like, okay, how do I contribute? But not from a place of I have to contribute because that's the way, it's some moralistic blood. Right, 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 right. Yeah, you do it for you. It's a genuine emerging from yes. with, within your, with yourself. How do I contribute? How do I help? Wanting to be helpful is also very human. Very, very innate in us. Wanting to contribute what I know, wanting to help with, but not from like, I'm better and I'm a savior, but from, hey, I have experience here. Wow. I'd like to contribute. This is amazing. You know how much I love your wisdom and how it feels right in my body. Every time you speak, is like, it's bringing up uh, uh, another piece of me back home. Every mm. time that, 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 because it's, it's, it's an, I haven't stopped working on myself. I feel like they, they're still pieces of me, fragments and, and, you know, and, and. Well, look, I, mean, I, I have, I have heavy, deep trauma from my childhood. Yeah. It's, it's pretty bad. And <laughs> the other day, um, I can't even remember what it was linked to, but I remember what I said. I looked at my husband and said, I'm so sick of my trauma. Amen. I'm so sick of like. Here it is. Here's this, you know, I'm where I'm at. I've done all this work. I'm, I, I always say healing isn't curing because that's true for me. That's true. And that's true. Uh, just the pain of like being hit in the gut by it and like, and, and wanting to deny or resist, but knowing I can't anymore. It's not an option for me. No. Right. Instead, I have to go, okay, I accept, I pull it in, I hold and I care. And I still will always wish that I didn't have it. Yeah, me too. Or anyone for that matter. Had, right? that, that that it would be so, I don't even know what life would be like without it. I mean, I, I get long periods of time. You know, I can go a year without a gut punch. Um, So I, I, I taste that, but then it's there and it's so clear and it's like, <gasps> and it's really important to have the skill sets of boundaries to not go Absolutely. to like, you're so stupid. How did you get here again? You should be over this. I will never be over this and it will always make me sad feel sad or i will always have grief about it that's a part of being shanti i can't if i, I can't take that away i wouldn't be me yeah but i also i'm not like lingering in it and suffering in the sense that like that's right i don't like seeing the trauma someone asked that yeah, question. yeah, yeah. but I'm, i don't want to say that i i I suffered. Yeah. I am a victim of child abuse. Yeah, yeah. I don't want to, you know, that's, that's not what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, we cannot, we cannot numb it. No, that, that's no. important to say no. what happened. It happened. Yes. It happened. I, can, yes. I hold that in care, but I don't live as if that's who I am. Oh, amen. Amen. Wow. Shanti, with this, we're going to close everyone, you know. Listen to this, send us your feedback, send us your questions. This was so powerful and I, I'm, I'm feeling it myself. So thank you, Shanti. Thank you everyone for your questions. And those of you whose your questions were not answered, you know, we're gonna put all the, you know, all the mediums for you to connect with Shanti for to find her classes, her workshops. I know many of you ask when is she having an online course? All of that, you know, she's going to be able to answer to you. We'll put all of her information in the, I hope this served you. And most important that it helps you what Shanti said, um, call yourself or your nervous system back home. Thank you, Shanti. And thank you, everyone. I'll see you next time. Un besito. Adios. Thank you for listening to the Spirituality Now podcast. Be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcasting platform and share us with a friend. To learn more about how to live more present in the moment and take your faith into action, visit thelaflorteachings.com forward slash faith to access the free training of 21 Days of Faith in Action today.